Too bad it's not a beer. Good lord. Anyways, wh where are my manners? This is Mike Check 95, along with my cohort here, Trigger Margin 1. And it seems to be that the next film that we reviewed in our Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World series is one of your favorites because it's the first one you saw in the series. Also, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. What's the name of the film? Jurassic Park the Third. Before we get into the numbers, I'd like to uh, tell us about the story. The synopsis. Basically, to summarize it, Alan Grant is taken to Isla Sorna to help a married couple, I mistakenly, they're not married, they're divorced, two people who were eloped at one point uh, to find their son lost on the island. While there, they run into trouble with a T-Rex, raptors, and the mysterious Spinosaurus. That is the, basically the plot line of this movie. Uh, what are the numbers? So, the budget for this film is a whopping $93 million. They have box them. That's, that's low. That, I feel like that's low, low. Well, with the amount of low budget they have, with the cast they have, I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah, and my hips pop so good. Um, anyway, so they box, box office $368.8 million so they continue to break records with this franchise and make even more money. Yeah, but how come it took them 10 plus years to make a sequel? Well, I guess that'll be a discussion on when we'll watch the next Jurassic Park. So, the critics rate this film a 4.8 and the audience rates this film a 3.6. It's not really well liked. Which is a travesty. Travesty. Yes. Um, on to the, uh, I just have three, three random factoids, no goofs, no, no alternate credits. So, in this film, the special effects crew used 250 gallons of oatmeal to stimulate Spinosaurus. So, the Spinosaurus was actually not the original idea what they were going to use for it. Yeah. Their original idea was going to be the Baryonyx, but the new director that came in said that he, he did, wanted to have a clear distinction between the T-Rex and whatever the new dinosaur will be. And he felt like the Baryonyx would be too easily confused with the T-Rex. And my third thing is, the, is more of a fan theory. Um, so it's one of two things. There's a Spino Revenge Theory. If you notice, after the, after the events of the, the airplane going off, the Spino was like on their ass, like they did something. Mm -hmm. So two things, are, two things are noticed. Either they hit, you know, obviously they hit the Spino on the way out and that hurt it. So they're just trying to get revenge. But the one we see didn't seem like it hurt. hurt then another thing was thinking was maybe that was the partner of the Spino and they killed the Spino whenever they went off. And that one was just like, I'm getting I'm trying to get revenge. Those are two interesting fan plots that, that were uh, that were mentioned. I can say right now that the uh, partner thing is not really backed up that well because uh -huh. there is a lot of like back uh, research history about the uh, scientific studies of the events that happened on Sorna before uh, Jurassic Park 1 happened. From what I know, from what the knowledge that's been given to us and like the, the books and everything and like the information about this franchise and whatnot, there is very, 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 uh, this is stuff I want to get into in the comments, very little information given about the Spinosaurus in this movie. It's true because there's a big on now, so we don't know how many there are if there's only one. Like, why would they act like that way? And, and he, his fin clearly was not damaged. Like, we saw in the rest of the movie, and he didn't take an airplane to the back of his fin. There's actually been people who said that scene, that broken fin and whatnot, but it's very hard to define. So, uh, you, can, you, can go, you can go first, because I actually want to do comments before I get into okay, my... Okay, so mine's going to be a lot shorter. Um, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and the only negative thing I have is rewatching it now, that Rachel Chick, the, the wife, was extremely annoying. Yeah. And she was like, biblically dumb bitch the entire time. I, I hated it. Um, and I think you said that last time we watched this, like five, four like, or five years ago. Like whenever she was hanging upside down from the tree, I was like, ah, oh, damn, it, that was dark. But that's my only negative. Everything else I love about this film, I think it's one of the most perfect films that's ever been made in the history of films. Now, Michael, you can go ahead and destroy the film. Before I get into my pros and cons, there's actually a lot of stuff I'd like to discuss with you with this film because there's a lot of stuff about this movie that, strangely enough, 
kind of what could have been. At the same time, it's just interesting uh, discussion. Theoretically, who would have killed the boat drivers in the very beginning of the film? Because, Fish. well, there is there is no uh, actual uh, evidence on the movie that shows any like w aquatic th uh, dinosaurs in this movie, and the only thing that was this pterodon. That could be a theory. Because wasn't the top of the, their, their boat in tatters? Well, no. Like the Persians were? That actually, that could not have worked because there's actually a theory to say that the pterodons did do it, but the pterodons were stuck in the gyrosphere, the, the bird cage, uh, until uh, Mrs. Kirby didn't lock the door. So that would, that would not have made any sense at all for it to be the pterodons to uh, destroy that. So it was either an off screen aquatic. Uh, dinosaur or the Spinosaurus. This is actually the very first visual representation of the Spinosaurus ever shown because maybe like two, like the Spinosaurus was like maybe three years old knowledgeable wise, like three to five years old knowledgeable wise before this film was made. So when this Spinosaurus was put on screen it made a lot of um, paleontologists angry and it created the biggest debate to this day as to how the Spinosaurus was supposed to look. It's been changed to uh, on two legs, on four legs. He's a meat eater. He likes strictly fish. He's a little bit of both. He has a spine. He doesn't have a spine. It's still debated to this day on what the Spinosaurus looks like. I know that this film has had a lot of uh, issues. And this is a true story. They had uh, had a script down for this film and ready to go in the other Almost done filming the movie with that script. Then somebody came to the producing crew, hands them a new script and says, this is your script, this is how I want the movies done. And they had to get it done a week before the deadline. So another thing that kind of backs up with like the, the 10 years of history before JP won mm -hmm. and the fact of the very little actual information of the Spinosaurus, since, since, at, since at the time of the movie with very little information on the spinal, both in the film, and both in real life, wouldn't that make the Spinosaurus engine's very first hybrid? Because there was a lot of backing theories about ab about like this, because the fact that like there's very little information about it, nobody really knows what what it looks like, what it does, what it, what's its actual diet, and with all that backing like information too about the engine experience experiments before Jurassic Park one that technically, it doesn't really 100% say it is, but it technically could say, I think theoretically, that this could be Engine's first test run that failed, quote unquote failed, oh, yeah, nice. as a hybrid. With, with the movie footage of like the destruction of like the old park on Sorna and like mm -hmm. the science labs on this film as well, that could either be an explanation of one or two things. Either the raptors did it, or the lab that they went through was where the Spinosaurus was created, and once it got old enough, it went on a rampage and just destroyed everything. Which, with the amount of damage that science lab was gone through, plus everything else around that that was made by humans, I feel like it would take a lot of raptors to create that much damage. I think the Spino was created in that lab that they were walking through, and once yeah, it broke yeah. free, it caused all that damage and destruction, which ended the experiments on Sorna and they banned the site. I think it'd be pretty damn hard to kill that spino. Yeah, that's with why. With that short of that military going in and tr taking them out with a helicopter with armor piercing rounds and like bombs and stuff, like a spino's pretty, T-Rex is already dangerous enough, but spino's having that, having those four legs and being able to swim really good. Yeah. It's like, it's it's a really hard argument for anything in nature to beat it, yet alone us. That's why I'm saying like, uh, this kind of spino, uh, with even though a lot of people hate it for a lot of many reasons, it kind of gets a pass in my head because there's really not much backing information to tell what the Spino looks like in real life because it gets changed every like five years. That's why I'm thinking like this is like a uh, now a you, Jurassic Park made engine version of the Spino. Now you could ar argue for the engine of, of like kind of genetically modifying them because that one seems super aggressive and you could believe that that would yes. be a hybrid. That, they added some aggression to, um, because as soon as he saw people, he was just like, I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah, because... Which traditionally, the way that they act, at least in, when it, in my experience when I was playing Arc, on Arc, they, they have their own behavior based on how the actual dinosaurs are. 
and anytime you saw a spider in the wild, they they'd hang around the fish areas. And mm-hmm. they, they were fishers more than anything else, yeah. and they go around in beaches and stuff. And like this one was like inland, and it was just going straight for anything it saw. It saw a T Rex, and it was like, I'm just gonna snap your neck now. Yeah. When it, it when it just got that, it, well, the T Rex was feeding in its territory, so so you could assume maybe that's why he was doing that. But um, the fact you're pointing out that they hit that spino thing on the beach line and the fishers or whatever, that's all correct. That's why I'm saying like maybe this spino is the test run for the the anonymous for the for the film that like ten years later. If you want to tie in the the they also could have been we'll changed. get into the anonymous and Jurassic World. Well, it's interesting creating all these theories. That's why I like discussing this information about the spinos because because like there's actually no confirmed like documentations like there's Jurassic Park documentations of there being like evidence of experiments on Sorna 10 years before Jurassic Park, but a lot of it is like blacked out. I think one thing that's tough is that after this movie, they get, they, they were like, okay, we're done, we made our money, and they kind of gave up on this universe until, uh, until that, how many years later? 10 years later? And then, you know, Cash Cow then came in and was like, oh, we can just do this again. Yeah. Theoretically, uh, Sorna is not gone. So pretty much theoretically, the new trilogy that we're going to get into later on does not say that the first three films are not canon. Like they they do acknowledge that the they're third definitely film, canon. They do acknowledge that they exist. So that so they do acknowledge that the Spinosaurus does exist still. I want to see a movie of how Eric survived eight weeks on the island by himself and how he got the T Rex P. All right, so I I do have some pros. It's it's a it's a very small pro list. Um, the animatronics and the CGI was actually really good in this movie. I do like the combination of both of them for all the dinosaurs seen on the screen. Okay, Grant's acting in this entire film was great. Like, his, the smirk when he was predicting the, the Kirby survival when they first got there, that was hilarious. Um, his um, on-screen development with Eric I thought was probably the best, like, back and forth act, like, dialogue between characters was on the movie. I mean, they tried to do something with him and Billy, but Billy just came off as just annoying. Spooky carried on the scene where it's like walking on the... The, the, the walkway and here comes the pterodon through the fog or whatever that was actually kind of cool and the imagery of fire around the spinosaurus actually looked really good i did like it okay that's it for the pros what that's it check on the other side of the page i'm sure there's pros you got stuff right over there that's all cons okay we'll just get through those quickly okay number one it would have been smarter to, it would have been smarter for the kirby's to have malcolm as a guy since he's actually been on the actual island instead of alan grant bribery i thought that was dumb the lucky bag rehash i was like okay that's that's lovely the talking raptor is dumb as fuck alan end of story uh don't don't take a handgun to a spinal fight uh theoretically grant should have died during the spinal versus rex fight <laughs> Try Cyclophlops. That was a good line. That, that's not a good line. Um, not enough backstory put into the, put into the Spino due to, due to it being cut out to reshoots. I wanted more backstory to the Spino, which also ties into the science lab they went into, but they cut that in half because raptors, raptors, raptors. Everyone screaming was also very dumb. A dried attempt at humor. ring a ding ling Spino. I thought that was funny. The illogical science and nonsense on, of how the Spinosaurus has an ninja feet. You don't hear it at all until you see it on screen and then you hear it stomping around. You even made a comment about this. The metal yeah, door stops the Spino it. after he busts through a reinforced concrete fence. That didn't make any With no problem. Sense. And whenever he went to go bite at them as they went through a small hole, he was like, oh no, I can't get it. Uh, Billy, should not, would, Billy should not and would not have survived the pterodon attack. The Pterodon Dyrosphere door was left unlocked, but it kind of left alone and forgotten until the end of the movie, and then they're like, oh, they're just going to go find a new nesting ground. Like, it's fucking okay to have Pterodons flying around to go land wherever they so please, and then it's like, okay, you, if, what if they land in fucking New York City? What the fuck are you going to do? Dinosaur fucking thing. Godzilla, that bullshit? And, and that then was they were setting up for Jurassic Park 4. Yeah, but. Never happened. Yeah, but. We don't want to get into Jurassic Park 4. There was some weird fucking shit w- with that fucking script. The thing is, is like, they did the same mistake that Lost World did. There were loose flying around pterodons. At the end of both movies. It's like, what are they going to do? And where the fuck did the gyrosphere come from? There's no gyrosphere in Lost World. The Ceratosaurus breaks the fourth wall. The last two were just things about the movie I didn't like in general. 
Uh, promote next big baddie dino, Spinosaurus. Give it very little screen time. Good job, guys. Good movie. This was also the shortest movie of all. If you're going to promote the Spinosaurus and put it on the front cover, you would make it the main baddie. But no. The raptors have always overshadowed every other dinosaur in this franchise so far, and this one's a glaring and issue. And they, they always glorify the raptors. This film gods. is a glaring issue because why would you promote a brand new dinosaur for the entire series only to have the raptors overshadow it in the very end? The Spinosaurus was the main promotion for this film, and you still ended with raptors. At this point, I'm uh, at this point of us reviewing these, I'm annoyed by the raptors. Okay, I am finally done. The last one is just me saying this should not survive so many survive moments, but I'm just done talking about this one. And on to our ratings. I'm sorry I joshed it. So my, my rating of this movie is a 9.8 out of 10. My fucking god. There's very little I did not like about this movie. All the things that Mike just mentioned seem like they're nitpicky, bitchy little things. That were, I'm not calling you bitchy. I know no, you're not, but it's just... <laughs> I felt like they're nitpicky, and like they're, they're, they're ones that were like... That somebody wanted to like tear apart a movie. It's like little tiny small things. Like oh, there's leaks in the background. Oh, I don't like this. Uh, this th it had I'll bet you my bottom dollar in it. Like the greatest line of all time. Um, so yeah, it's almost perfect film um, in my opinion. This is the best Jurassic Park up to date that we've watched so far. I like it better than one and definitely two. So, um, granted, yes, I did nitpick this film to death, but uh, I've been trying to get better at trying to critique movies in a way that I'm not trying to be biased towards. Like, I wasn't trying to be biased towards me hating this film, because I even admitted that there was stuff in this film that I actually liked well, before I said I hated everything about this movie. There's nothing... Not the entire film is bad. There's some good elements about it, and there's some interesting elements that would have been cool if they would have explained better. But, to be frank, yes, a lot of the stuff that I nitpicked at are typical nitpick stuff that unusual critics uh, point out at, but at the same time, for me, those are a lot of glaring issues that hurt the film a lot, and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, especially when the big one is the fact that you promote the spy note, you give it about 10 minutes of screen time, and you give the raptors like double that amount. That is my, honestly, that is my biggest problem with the movie, is the fact that there is not enough spy note and there's too much raptors. Like, that is the biggest issue I have with the film. For that point there, I am going to have to give this film a four and a half, because it's just, there is too many issues with the film during the movie, the ending product we got, and during the shooting of the film, and there's too much information that is left on the cutting room floor, and in the trash can, and in the shredder, and in the backlogs of the actual Jurassic Park-like knowledge bullshit that is not in this movie, and I feel like this film, if it were a full two-hour film, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> But, uh, yep, those are my thoughts and ratings on this film. It is a four and a half, and I know you don't agree with me. 9.8. I know, I know you don't agree with me, Krieger, but that is just where I stand. But if, like, that, that, that's me giving it, that's me being nice. Don't think you're biased. Against no, no, if, if this before, goes to hell. no, before this, watching this film now, I would rate this film a one out of ten. There are stuff in this film I actually like, and stuff that I find in this film that are interesting. It's just... So not enough. They 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 did too much stuff. So set the tone for our next Jurassic Park film. Uh, what, what's the movie? Uh, check back in ten years later when we actually go back to Isla Nub Nubar and do the same thing all over again. Isla Nubar is the one from the first one. Yes. Okay. Okay. We will see you in Isla Nubar. Bar, everyone. Jurassic World, 2015, with a crisp rat.